Hey everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be going over a pretty simple topic, but also a very important one. Uh, if you're new to B2B Commerce or Commerce Encore, you might be wondering how do I set up a new buyer so that I can actually log into my storefront and start purchasing? Well, today we're going to be going over setting up a buyer in B2B Commerce and D2C Commerce. We'll go through all the steps that are needed and we'll show it live as well. So stay tuned. As we're thinking about the high level steps here to actually get a new user set up in the storefront, we're going to be going through four different steps today. Number one is we need to create and set up the account. Two is we need to create a contact underneath that account. Three, we need to set up a user based on that contact. And four, we need to give it permissions to be able to access the storefront. Now with these steps in mind, let's jump right into Salesforce and see how this is done. You can see we're in Salesforce now inside of our commerce app. First thing we're gonna do is navigate over to our accounts object. Now you can find this by going into your dropdown then clicking accounts. If you're not seeing accounts here, you will be able to click edit and add more items and find accounts and be able to pull that on the screen here. Once you are in accounts, we're gonna click new and this will give you the ability to create a new account. Now in Salesforce, accounts are basically the businesses we're working with. So this is not the individual person here. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new account called Joe Builder. This is going to be a construction company that's gonna be buying parts from us or building materials from us. Now you can go ahead and fill out any of this information. Uh, we're gonna keep it blank for the purposes of today, but you could fill in your standard and custom fields here. Uh, this could also be loaded in all at once if you're trying to do this in bulk, or you can bring this in incrementally through integrations. But once we have a new account called Joe Builder, we have set up the first portion of our setup step. But once we have an account called Joe Builder, we have the account created. Now we need to finish setting up the account so that it actually is connected to our store. What you need to do here is go up into edit page and you do need to be an admin to be able to do this. Once we're in the edit page here, you can see that on the left hand side, we have a new component called buyer account. This allows us to see how the accounts are connected into our store. So what I like to do here is create a new tab. You can go and click custom at the top here. You can call this buyer account. And once you have this new tab in here, you can switch over to it by clicking on it and you can drag over buyer account right into the pane here. Once we click the save button, we'll be able to activate this new page layout or lightning app for us. You can set this as the org default if you'd like. Uh, you can also set it up specifically for a specific permission or profile. Uh, once you uh, have activated this, you can go back to your account. And once you're here, you'll be able to see the new buyer account tab. We can see that we have a message says, enable this as a buyer in order to display the buyer details, which is good. Uh, this will show up once we have uh, the buyer actually enabled or this account enabled as a buyer. Uh, if we go to the top right hand corner, you can see we have a couple of drop downs. We have one as enabled as partner and one as enabled as buyer. If you don't see enable as buyer, which is the one we need, you can go ahead and click edit object in the drop down. And once you're over here, you can edit the page layout and inside of the page layout under the lightning actions, you will be able to see the enable as buyer right here, uh, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and you will be able to find that in the list from above and be able to drag it down to the bottom if you don't see it. Now going back over into our account, we're gonna go ahead and click enable as buyer. And once we've done that, this will set up the actual account so that it is a buyer account in the store. And you can see that now the buyer account is actually showing up and it's showing uh, in this depending status and with some of the default values here. But now we've completed step one, which is creating the account and setting up the access to the store. Now moving on to step two here, we need to create the contact. So we can go back over into related and we can go down to contacts and we can click new. And in here, we'll be able to fill out the information about this new contact. Now account is the business, contact is the individual you're working at or will be logging into the storefront. So in this case, we have someone over there called Mark uh, Jefferson. And Mark Jefferson is one of the contractors that will be working underneath Joe Builder. Uh, and so we can fill in his information here, his email address and all the other details. For what we're going to be doing today, you need the first last name, and you need an email address. So we're gonna go ahead and just do mark at joebuilder.com. 
and we'll be able to uh, click save. If you actually want this email to come to your inbox, uh, you can put your email address plus whatever you want at the very end. So if your actual email address was someone at gmail.com, you can do someone at gmail.com plus mark so you know who it's actually coming from, what user, and this will allow you to get the actual email in your inbox if you plan on logging in that way. Uh, but since we're not doing that, we'll just leave it as mark and I'll be able to click save uh, from there. Now we've completed step two. Step three is actually enabling uh, as a user. So very similar process as the account here, uh, but if you go to the drop down, you can see we have enable customer user right here. Uh, and if you don't see that, again, you can click the gear and click edit object. And once you've clicked edit object, you can go to the page layout and go to the lightning action section and you'll be able to bring over uh, several of the actions that you need here. So going back over to Mark Jefferson, we'll be able to drop this down, click enable customer user, and this will actually jump us over into the setup section. So in order to do this, you do need the ability to create users in setup. Uh, so this isn't going to be something that everyone does here. But once you have this, you can see that it's auto filled in his information from the contact. Uh, and it's actually uh, loaded as one of our user licenses. Uh, if you have a custom profile set up, you can use that custom profile and it is a best practice to do that. In this instance, I uh, have one underneath the customer community plus. So I selected customer community plus as the user license, and then I can choose my tiny homes community plus uh, as the profile here. So it is recommended that you use a custom profile. Once we've done that, you can edit any of the information on here, but we'll click save. And you can see that it flashed up for a second here that a welcome email will be sent out uh, to this individual. It actually won't until we enable them against the individual community or the store that they're gonna be going against. Uh, but you can see that it is connected to uh, Mark, the contact. So that's a really key uh, piece of information here. The contact and the user are connected and inseparable. Once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the uh, permission sets for this individual. So you can see that we have two different permission sets we can choose from. We can choose from the buyer or the buyer manager. Now there's a little bit of difference here between the two of these. Uh, buyer manager, one of the things you can do is log in as other people and purchase on behalf of them uh, within the store and also create new users. In most cases, you want to enable the buyer here. And once you've saved this, this will kick off the actual uh, welcome and activation if you've set it up that way. So this is step four right here, the permissions. The other thing that I want to call out here is we're going to jump back over into our commerce app for a moment. You need to make sure that you have the permission set up on the community side of this as well. So if we go back over into our storefront and click experience builder, and once experience builder loads, if we go over into uh, administration here we can go to members and it's really important that you have your profile uh, selected and this profile is what ties this community user that we just saw to the store so they can access it uh, so, so I may have misspoken just a little bit earlier but uh, when they get assigned to the profile that's when they will get the activation email uh, and they should get an email in their inbox the buyer permission set is actually what gives them not the ability to log in, but the ability to see all the commerce related aspects. So if you don't have this profile or the profile you plan on using selected over here, you can go to all in this list and you can see all the customer community ones, and the tiny home ones. Uh, in my instance, uh, you'll be able to flip that over there and then click save uh, and then make sure you republish and you have everything activated and then you'll be able to uh, have your user access the storefront. Now the last thing we're going to cover here real quick is if we go into our new account uh, Joe Builder and then we go to Mark Jefferson now that we've set this person up correctly we will be able to click login to experience as user and uh, you'll be able to click your uh, storefront here uh, if you have multiple it'll show a list like this and once you've done that it will automatically log you in as that user. So this is a really nice way to be able to log in as a user, test things without having to constantly log in to the actual user and have multiple emails uh, remembered and passwords remembered. 
Thanks for watching and hopefully this was a good overview of setting up a simple buyer in B2B and D2C commerce and all the pieces that you need to understand around accounts, contacts, users, and permissions. Thanks for watching.